Now, moving on, and an inmate in Alabama is about to become the first person to be executed using nitrogen gas after he survived botched attempts at the lethal injection. Uh, Kenneth Eugene Smith has been on death row since uh, 1996, but his lawyers have argued that this new method of execution is untested and runs a risk of choking him. The state's attorney general has called it the most humane method of execution ever devised. Uh, joining us now uh, is human rights campaigner Peter Tatchell, and uh, Dr. René Hunderkamp has been kind enough to step back into the studio to perhaps give us the medical angle. But uh, first to you, Peter. Look, you know, I'm guessing you're against the death penalty. Uh, even I'm kind of conflicted on it. Uh, Alex, you'll be surprised to hear, is against it. So it is one of those <laughs> issues. It is one of those issues people are not necessarily predictable on. Uh, but, you know, for better or for worse, Alabama has the death penalty. Uh, what we're talking about here now is the method we use. So they're going to kill people uh, for their crimes. Uh, this method, never been tested on human beings, has been ruled too cruel for animals, apparently deprives the uh, body of oxygen in a, a way that is excruciatingly agonising. And the witnesses to this death will, will, will watch something that they will never forget, a man in his death throes writhing in agony. Uh, uh, protesters have said, this is torture. This isn't execution, this is torture. So... Given we all accept where we stand on the death penalty, what do you think about the use of nitrogen gas? One last caveat. Uh, they did try and execute him a month or so ago uh, by a lethal injection. They couldn't find a vein. So this is why he's having to go through this. So your thoughts? Well, first let me say the death penalty is morally and ethically wrong. It's against international human rights law. Mm. And if the state says it's wrong for individuals to kill other people the state itself should not engage in killing. Mm. That would be hypocritical. It would set a very bad example. Mm. Secondly, in the United States, there are a huge number of miscarriages of justice, and there's a high probability that in death penalty cases, innocent people are being mm. put to death. And thirdly, on your point about nitrogen, it is a form of suffocation, and suffocation is agonising. It's a very unpleasant, cruel and inhuman way to die, let alone kill someone. So I just think on all those grounds, this execution should be called off. Uh, Rene, the US Attorney General saying, oh, it's the most humane form of uh, the death penalty that could be devised, and yet here in the UK we won't use it against animals even. Medically, uh, what would the level of suffering be, so do you think? I think the answer is, Alex, we don't actually know because we've never used it before on a human being in this way. There are different views of scientific thought. I've had a look. There are those that say actually hypoxia is actually a really good place to be and then he would be unconscious so there would be no suffering. There's other papers that say that when you starve all of the cells in the body of oxygen, the pain that that creates is excruciating. So I think we're dealing with something that we don't know. And I think it's kind of irrelevant really because this man's been on death row for 30 years um, we should be arguing about whether or not he just stays in prison for life as we've discussed several times already and whether or not it's humane to kill anyone full stop i fail to see as a doctor that they could not have had him back in there with an anaesthetist with an ultrasound machine to find a vein if they really really wanted to kill him in a humane way uh, Peter, uh, this guy, uh, he, he, what he did was he killed a, a preacher's wife uh, for $1,000. He was a hit man. Um, and uh, he's been uh, in jail. He was convicted of this crime in 1989. These processes towards death row, uh, towards the actual execution, yeah. take a long, long time. Uh, just going off piece, uh, I once did a story when I was out there, a, a, a mother in uh, Jacksonville in Florida uh, who had two sons on the same death row for different crimes. Uh, that, that's America for you. Uh, but given, you know, these kind of crimes, these are sometimes these horrific, horrific crimes that, you know, are unimaginable, uh, you're still not uh, going to be budged at all on your belief that we should not take another human life. What that man did was absolutely atrocious, abhorrent, reprehensible and vile. He should be punished. He should be punished but I don't think using the death penalty is the way to go. I mean, I sure you know about the many recent cases of men who were on death row in the United States. They eventually got reprieves, and then 30 or 40 years later, it was proven that they were innocent all along. On that grounds alone, mm -hmm. the death penalty should not be used because too many innocent people 
are at risk of being killed. Yeah, and killing by the state is basically replicating mm. killing by deranged and, and monstrous people. The state should set a good example, punish that man, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, make him you know, experience incarceration mm -hmm. and perhaps do community work within prison mm -hmm. um, you know, to earn his keep, um, but don't kill him. That, that's resorting to his method. Yeah, 27 states uh, now execute people, uh, and it is a debate that rages. I, I've been to, uh, I've actually witnessed one, but I've been to outside a prison in San Antonio, and the atmosphere is, is medieval. There's a sort of big countdown clock, you know, going like this. There's, there's fun fair things. There's people eating burgers, stalls, beers, bands yeah. playing. It's really weird. It, it's unbelievable that a democracy like the United States uses the death penalty alongside countries like China, mm. Iran, yeah. Saudi Arabia, yeah. you know, to equate a democracy, to, for a democracy to equate the punishment yeah. being appropriate as these tyrannical dictatorships is just unforgivable. And by the way, your point about American justice, I mean, I, as I say, I'm conflicted about the death penalty, but uh, if there's a miscarriage of just, justice, you, not much you can do about it if you already killed someone. Yeah. Uh, but I covered the uh, O.J. Simpson trial, so I know about American justice. It should be viewed with a slight kind of suspicion. Well, even here in the UK, mm -hmm. you know, I've been following the Jeremy Bamber case, who, uh, in 1986, was convicted of murdering five family members. He's been in prison 38 years, protesting his innocence. If we had the death penalty, he certainly would have been yeah. executed. But now we know that the police, Essex police, have withheld hundreds of items of evidence from the original trial and appeals. They've admitted that to me, but they've said, we don't believe that evidence is relevant. Mm -hmm. They've ensured that the National Archives, all the files on Jeremy Bamber are closed until 2079. And on top of that, they've got an order on the Forensic Science Service that they are not allowed to release any information about the Jeremy Bamber case, not even to Jeremy's defence team. Now, there's an example where a possibly innocent man, yeah, yeah, I'm not yeah. saying he is innocent, I'll but get you, a possibly innocent man saying, yeah. may yeah. Be, have been executed. Uh, there's definitely a good point. It's definitely a good point. There's no going back after you've executed someone. Oh, either killing's wrong or is not. That's uh, my <laughs> simple view on all of this. Yeah. Peter Tatchell and Rene Hendrikamp, thank you so thank much. Thank you so much.